What are your thoughts on fruit, Brad? Um, I think the first person to ever discover fruit yeah. must have been absolutely buzzing. Why? Well, imagine like trying a piece of bark for the first time. Bark? Yeah, bark. Because someone's tried bark 100% thinking, oh, that's going to be good food. Yeah. And then you've really ate it tough. Hmm. Oh, fuck's sake, that's kill. Yeah. And then you can... So it is squat Saturday, oh, I don't even know what number it is anymore. But anyway, what we're focusing on today is the upper back tightness. So a lot of people when they squat they have their arms wide just like that. Now, personally I don't feel tight at all like that and I think the average Joe could get a lot tighter in the squat because obviously the tighter you are the more force you're going to be able to generate and the safer the lift's going to be and the stronger you're going to feel. So as you can see here my hands are a lot closer to me and what I'm imagining is that I'm sort of bending the bar over my back. Now what I'm doing here as you can see is like a throttle just there and what I'm doing there is that I'm engaging my lats and I'm imagining that I'm putting my right elbow in my left back bum pocket and my left elbow in my right back bum pocket and what's that that's doing is that it's creating that upper back tension and as you can see here boom super duper tight with my hands a lot closer to me and um, and yeah obviously there are some people who would rather squat with their hands wide because they're sort of they haven't maybe got the flexibility in their in their shoulders to achieve that but the tighter you are the better it's going to be and who knows maybe one day you'll have massive legs like these bad boys that's a joke, by the way. Just doing some Saturday morning work with my man Maxine. There he is, right there, showing his. Show us your rear back double by. My top on, my top off. Top off. There we go. Loves, loves getting his top off. Any excuse. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. You are looking absolutely fat. Fat, fat as fuck. No, you look incredible. Thanks. Um, so today, not much. Being done, just a bit of work with Max. We're on our third coffee now, aren't we, Max? Yeah. Well, third in total. I've had one, he's had two. And um, I'm going for a game of badminton with my client Cam today. We've been working together for a year now, so treating him to a game of badders, and then we're going to go for food and then may potentially train. If not, Sophie's going to come over. And um, we're just going to chill and we're cooking food for Brad and Biha tonight because they cooked us burgers last night. So we only thought it would be fair to make them something because we've never actually cooked for them. Although we can't cook good cooks, but um, just have another time really. But tonight, chill night, probably watch a bit of Narcos as well, finish that off. And that's the plans for today. About my vlogs, I've sort of realised, excuse the noise by the way, it's just tumble. I've sort of realised that I haven't really spoke much about flexible dieting. So if you didn't know, if you don't know my story, I used to be an avid clean eater. Waking up, mackerel, eggs, and spinach for breakfast. Because paleo, bro. It's just not a nice place to be, uh, but that's a story for another day. So back to flexible dieting. It allows me, so as you know, I'm back on maintenance calories now. Whenever the fuck I want, I've got friends coming over tonight for food, but it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of common sense and a lot of planning for it to work. You can't just, you know, sort of wake up and just eat anything. You can't wake up and just eat chocolate for breakfast. That's not what flexible dieting is. It's eating certain foods. I mean, bread and sausages, protein and a bit of carbs. That's what your body sees it as. It's not like 
going to turn into fat because it's a hot dog. Do you know what I mean? And people tend to think that flexible dieters, the only stuff they eat is junk and shit. But look at this. Oranges. Healthy food. Good for you. We eat a lot of apples, bananas, potatoes, chicken, broccoli. Broccoli. Loads of broccoli. But that's what flexible dieting is. Being flexible. Having friends around. Imagine if I was back in my paleo days when my friends were coming around tonight. We're planning on making this cream chicken stir fry shit, whatever it is. And there was no way I would have eaten cream back in that day and the food would have been so shit. And to be honest, I probably would never have had friends over because I was sort of in this bubble where I thought that eating these sort of foods would, would make me fat and it's not a nice place to be in. So I'm gonna enjoy my hot dog because I've been looking forward to this all day. Mm. We're such sick cooks. <laughs> Cooks. What did you say? Nothing. Just go on, say that again. I dare you. How about you? Fuck off. Good morning. Happy Sunday. So, every Sunday, I sort of mix things up in the kitchen, making me and Soph this bacon, mushroom, and egg bath sort of thingy. Go on, Soph. Do the honours. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So I have literally done bog all today. So it's just left and I'm going to go for a run because um, I just feel really tight. Uh, not really tight, that's such an over exaggeration. I just want to loosen up a bit. Really tight. And obviously I am, oh for fuck's sake, it's starting to rain. Typical. Uh, I'm still gonna go for a run, but um, yeah, because I'm on this little maintenance thingy now, I just wanted to, to do a little bit more running because I start to feel a little bit sluggish sometimes and when I start running, obviously, it builds my fitness levels back up and I just feel better in myself. Um, I don't particularly enjoy it, but as soon as I get going, it's okay. Let's all appreciate how much of them disaster I look going out for this run and clearly we're in this to sweat more because um because obviously if you sweat you're burning fat because it's um it's um what was that saying again fat crying that was it so sort of midway through that midway through that run it sort of hit me as to how unfit I was compared to when I was about I don't know in year 11 year 12 year 13 when I was doing cross countries all the time, playing rugby three, four times a week, my fitness levels are not as good as what they were. But what am I going to do? Moan about it? Or do something about it? It's like when people want to get into shape and lose body fat, they'll moan about it, but they won't do fuck all about it. And that's what pisses me off. You have control over your life. And the harsh reality is no one's going to do it for you. And in the majority of cases, no one gives a fuck if you want to get fitter, if you want to get leaner, if you want to get stronger. No one actually cares, because everyone, to an extent, is here for themselves. And there's a very select few who will actually care for your goals. But the majority don't. So when you start moaning to them and complaining that you're not where you want to be, do something about it, hire a coach, Stop spinning your wheels and get on with it. Because quite frankly, frankly, quite frank, I don't know what I don't know what word to use, but I'll use frankly anyway. No one cares. And you are the only one who can do something about it. Stop moaning and just do it. 